Kathy Vig, Deeply Awake. Um, <clears throat> well, what's coming to me is information regarding control, responsibility. You see that smoke behind my, my head? It's not smoke. Not physical smoke. Hello! Control, responsibility, and... Well, there's one more thing. Because, um, trust. There it is. Control, responsibility, and trust. Uh, I find controlling people quite uh, amusing. And really <laughs> highly annoying. They make tempests in teacups. And they catastrophize. They look ahead and uh, see problems and solve problems. Well, I'm really good at that. That to me was a mark of a good manager. Great, you're going to solve this, this system-wide issue. Super great. Oh, and you've got a cure? All right. Now, uh, be aware that for every cure, there are five problems that are going to crop up. So, all right, sit down and anticipate. Think it through. And um, usually I could roll out a pretty tight system that didn't require a lot of tweaking. Because, I, I mean, I don't like to tweak on the go when it comes to a policy. But um, I'm talking, you know, work now. Although I suppose it could be applied to anything. So, yeah, is that a form of control? Hell yes. And then I saw it in one of my patients toward the end of um, this. I'm really feeling as if um, March 1 was the end of my, and I knew it was, f my formal, uh, my formal practice. I've since gone back to nursing, but um, I, and I'm practicing nursing at a very high level. You can trust me on that. But it's a different kind. And um, it suits me really well. I never thought I'd say that. But um, I am well blessed. But um, this issue of control, responsibility, and trust. To control means to problem solve in advance, I think. Um, or, or to identify a problem or something as problematic. And then to dissect the problem, to solve the problem. Hypothetically, of course. Theoretically. Over coffee. So that's, but control can take other forms. And it, uh, it becomes, it can become like an innervation where it's just, it becomes like an OCD thing, and I've experienced that, where I've had periods of my life where I've been so controlling that um, I just can't imagine how I would emotionally or psychically survive if I couldn't do X or Y. It just, control is a big deal. But what I, but the thing is that I see it in other people and go, it's just, it's so immature. And I, so then I think, well, okay, there's that damn reflectivity thing of, well, when you see it in somebody else and it triggers you, it means it's in you. Well, you know what? Maybe to some degree, sure, I can identify with it. I used to be quite a control freak. Highly anxious and all that crap. Okay, so sure, okay. But the truth is that I, I can see it for what it is. It's fear behavior. It's the absolute lack of trust that you're going to be supported by your environment, by your fellow man, or by your own decision-making capabilities and will. That's what control is. And I look at it and just go, oh, poor baby. Oh, God. And I can expect a whole lot of other behaviors, uh, I don't know, endeavors, pursuits, based on a person's need to control situation or their their desire and willingness to um, dissect problems in, in you know over coffee so that's controlling it's trying to solve a problem that's bugging you is there anything wrong with it 
No, not a, th not a thing, not a thing. But then there's this idea of, c of responsibility. I mean, if you want to ascribe to the belief that you create your own reality, well then, that kind of means that you're creating your own reality. Problems and all. Catastrophes and all. Things that you feel you must contain and control and all. So if you're, con if you're actually, you know, by your focus and your intention and your desires, having this reality, this set of circumstances, well, all right. How you feel about it, well, that's up to you. And if you don't like it, well, you have a choice. You got to figure out, you know, is it likable? And, uh, you know, at least as I did. Don't like something. Um, that's, that's pretty much just a red flag saying, hey, you need to pay attention to this. This is a big deal. This is a theme. This is karma. That's what I find. It's not so much about solving the problem on the fly. It's about, um, it's, it's a karmic red flag that is sort of like a spiral, like a fractal. It's uh, a personality trait or uh, you could call it coding that needs to be uh, taken care of, whatever. Cycles of thought, don't you have that? You find that, you know, for a few years you have this particular mindset and then things change a little bit and you're a little less anxious or a little bit more anxious or whatever. Have you noticed that? I know I'm not the only one. And I think those are just, as you, as you age and grow, you just have, I mean, is it appropriate to still act like you're five when you're 15? Or when you're 25 to act as if you're 15. I mean, and that requires a change in behavior, vocabulary, expectations of others, expectations of self. Why is it that we think that it ends at 35 or 45 or 50? I mean, how? And the refinements are, um, are improvements. And in this case, they're spiritual. But, um, and I think for all of us, they are. I think we're all going through this. And it's how we're translating this um, information that is truly multidimensional, quantum. And it makes people haywire, scares them and stuff. Although it's all full of love. Anyhow, control. Well, it's, it's, it, the supposition is that you're in charge of this shit. You. The, the one who uh, just fouled up the budget or who um, forgot the bread or you the, the one who is uh, you know biologic oh alright so you're in charge well good luck with that or responsibility of okay well maybe something bigger is in charge maybe I can be in more agreement with this and stop fussing so much and stop being so afraid of every single thing and stop resisting everything because obviously I brought it into my reality maybe just to resist it just to go oh PU this is uh, the, yeah we're, we're done here that kind of thing and sometimes just be, you just it's to introduce growth so that you become over time deeper or kinder or more compassionate or whatever but resp taking responsibility for your own creation and for your own pain. Well, I think that that's, I think that our mindset is, oh, to take responsibility, you have to take responsibility for yourself. That's always some m creepy dude who's, you know, some father figure saying, you, you fucked hard, you need to take responsibility for yourself. Like that, shaming. And I don't think it's like that at all. It's like I have control. I have I have control over this, not you know what what hole this is going to go into or you know whatever. But there's something bigger in charge of this, like a web. So if that's the case, it makes sense to love it, to acknowledge it if it hurts. 
if it's if it's just tearing you up to acknowledge the pain and love yourself I always think of myself when I'm feeling really sad or whatever I think of myself um, at five or at seven or at nine of you know just being forlorn about something like I don't know something that would break a nine-year-old's heart <laughs> and I imagine just holding myself oh baby oh I know it's so hard right now like that and then I kind of just can be easy with myself <laughs> So if it sucks right now, well, my, my guess is, because everything else in my life has been pretty purposeful, that this suckage is also purposeful. But I guess part of it is how much do I want to focus on the suckage <laughs> at this point, which is, I think, being responsible. It's just, <laughs> I get this in the car a lot, it's a lot about keeping your area clean, they say. <laughs> Just keeping your area clean. <laughs> so there's that, but then there's this trust that runs through it all. Because what I see with highly controlling behavior that borders on OCD, what is that a symptom of? Zero trust. No trust. Having gotten kicked in the balls when you really couldn't afford that particular gesture. So, uh, shielding by ordering the day. And that is okay. I mean, that's perfectly fine to order the day, to see things and to move along that way. It's if things don't go according to your vision and you get freaked out by it, like, I'm doing it wrong or this is horrible or... That's the OCD part. Yeah, if I don't flick this light switch on and off six times, then the world's going to explode. Actually, it's not going to. You're just going to feel like you can manage your anxiety better. And it's okay. It's a neurologic m misf misfire. It's okay. Don't hate yourself for it. Laugh at it. It's kind of funny. Breaks part. It's all anxiety. It's about not trusting. The only way I can make sure that the world keeps spinning is if I do this. Does not that also imply a bit of arrogance? Oh, I said it. Oh. So it's not, I don't find people who are controlling unattractive simply because it's in me and I, do, and I feel repe repellent and uh-uh. I feel pity because they don't trust and um, they're afraid and it's really nice when things go according to plan I think it's really really awesome when they don't I'm a I'm a big fan of that I long ago got over that oh oh this plan fell through Big fucking deal was supposed to. That's a bullet dodge, baby. Each and every time. Unless it's me sitting on my hands, rocking back and forth because I'm too anxious to get my butt out of the door or on the phone or whatever. That's different. When I get in my own way, that's different. But when I really want to do something and, uh, and, and it falls through, which I can assure you happens more frequently in my life than the than the than the gold nuggets. Um, I've I've finally accomplished what I was told I needed to be able to accomplish by the end of this year. I reposted it onto Facebook today. I may reprint it again. It was printed a year ago, written and printed a year and a day ago. Uh, just about how I felt like um, there was this ball of good coming toward me. I was working a night shift and I had this vision. It was really cool. Was so pretty. And the picture that accompanies the essay is, is, is a, as close as I could get to what I saw. This huge, huge golden light. And it can... Oh, there was such love in there. Oh my God. I mean, the good kind. And so much more. Oh, success and clients and just 
feel, doctor, feel good. That was all about feeling good. It was just like, and it was coming toward me. It wanted me. It wasn't about me chasing after it. It was that barreling down on me. Like it or not, get ready. <laughs> wow. That is some awesome stuff. And I, I was I have reviewed that the last tape I did three times. That's three hour commitment. It has really wow. That is quite the tape. That is quite the document. I am really, really proud of that. But today it's it's just um hollering out from this ledge I find myself on on my mountain. These three thoughts come together as a group. Control, responsibility, and trust. Because you know when you're in, I mean I, I tend to, it's embarrassing because I don't use a day timer. And I realized yesterday it's because I truly I, I decided I wanted to, to prove to myself in 14. I wanted to prove to myself that um, I can live completely synchronistically. So um, I got rid of my day timer, and I and I it was I never wanted to do that because anything that's in my head I figured was you know added luggage, added weight, slow slow my thinking down, um, keep it to you know if it's d dedicated to a piece of paper I don't have to carry it around and be conscious of it quite so much, and that's that's good energetically to do that. But um, I wanted to play with that, so I did. And for the most part, it's just, it is it's freaking awesome. This, this weekend and next weekend, I, I fouled up. I finally tripped up. So I bought, actually bought a calendar already. So I'm going to use my Wee Moon calendar for 2017. It's really the nice kind, the hardback kind. I'm so excited. But, um... Uh, the uh, the concept of control and responsibility and trust I really do trust that I'm always at the right place at the right time it, that just goes without saying I, whoever is in front of me is who's supposed to be in front of me and even though I can be very disappointed just because I don't really sometimes feel I feel alone a lot of the time I mean in company is what I mean um, that's mostly on me and this tool has been very helpful of the inside out. It's just, I'm really, really pleased with this last bit of work from the whales forward. It's, it's, a, compa it's, a, it's a package, it's just stunning. But the inside out of, um, what is it that took me saying, hey, really, uh, I, you guys don't get, you don't have the right to tell me if I'm ascended. I get, I, it's my right. I mean, isn't that pretty obvious? It's obvious. I mean, I've already done it with my sexuality, with just deciding what the hell it's, that's all about. It's just like, yeah, what, whatever, dudes. I get to decide. Not you. Like it or not. So I've already had that. And I've had it with many other things. What is it about this that was like the brass ring? What is it? And I think it's because that really is my core identity and it was very hard to accept that about myself it's, it's kind of a weird thing it is kind of a weird thing to accept and so that's why I really I'll end by this telling you about Drun Velo Melchizedek um, Drun Velo wrote a book called The Flower of Life and um, I got it early right after publication and it was very soothing to me because it was uh, the same flavor um, that I'd, I'd just gotten trained in from the teachers. Uh, lots of sacred geometry. It was very, very familiar. And then there came a time when I couldn't have it in my house. It like it was emitting some sort of a, a vibration odor. It was just very repellent. I mean, almost scary repellent. Yeah, I don't get scared at movies. I get scared at books that are sitting on my bookshelf. <laughs> but it's like, oh, I gotta get this shit out of here. It wasn't shit. It was just like, I, cause that, I value that information so highly. But I need to get rid of it. And that was um, like 2003. Then I bought them again and did the same thing again. 
But um, the first time I understood, it was because I wasn't supposed to have that stuff in my consciousness yet. It wasn't time. This was on a trajectory. And I've been reminded of this again and again and again, that um, there were certain things that were just off limits until they weren't off limits because that's just how it's like gates with like the Hinduism and lots of different things with me that um, like time capsule. And maybe I'll be aware of it, but they can't access it. It's very weird. Uh, I like it though, because uh, it makes for a sense of familiarity and then lots of gift opening. <laughs> oh, look at this. I remember this, but not like this. It's awesome, like that. It's kind of neat. But um, Dren Velo, he talks about uh, many, 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 many things. I'm reading The Serpent of Light right now. And one of the things he talks about is his reality. He's only had two lives. One was at a, as a Taos Pueblo woman very advanced. And then this one. It makes sense. The fused energy of what he did, right? It's beautiful. But then in this lifetime he got initiated and he woke up and then he had visions and then uh, he got he got into his clan and they trained him. Trained him up. And conferred special, you know, he and he still is part of, he, he identifies as a, as a Taos indigenous person. Um, not biologically, but by Akash. It makes sense. I mean, I'm, I'm Lutheran and Norwegian by biology, but I'm Hindu and Indian by Akash. Uh, so, anyhow. He was brought into the clan and he was trained and he was given special status. Very special status. And he walked with that the rest of his life, and you can, you can tell, reading his words. He holds himself with an authority. And uh, if you've been listening, you've heard. I have said again and again, uh, I, that's not something that I, I feel appropriate to do. To sit down and tell you how to hold your consciousness, tell you this or that or the other thing, who am I to do that? I'm here to describe what's going on with me. Not to tell you what to do. Because anybody who, you know, does that, I, I think is kind of gross. I don't like it. Because the, 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 the uh, inference is that I am less than and become more than. And it, it's, it just, it's a feeling. I know I'm being sensitive. I'm aware of that. But with Dren Velo, I just realized, you know, he had this society, and he had a, he, he was like, he was a prodigal son, or he was the prince, but he had a very unusual story that he fit right in. And I realized that, you know, I, I'm walking around, I didn't have that, me, 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 me. And then I thought, well, that's really not true anymore. Not really. Not really. Um, but my assistants have been non-physical and it's not like I can go somewhere. I, can, I can't just get in the car and go somewhere that's my spiritual home, although, you know, Leadville is as close to that as I can get. But there ain't nobody there with, you know, bread and, and wine saying, hey, I'm so glad you're back. I've got more to teach you. But man, let me give you a hug. It's not like that. And so I'm kind of feeling bad about that last night. And then I realized, no, 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 no. Same reason why I uh, this this path was uh, non-partnered. Same reason. No one was going to own this but me. I had to get here by myself. Sure, I could have assistance, but I never took classes after the 80s. And I didn't let anybody put anything on me. I learned from the teachers, but they didn't tell me what I was, ever, where I came from, nothing like that. That was not for them to tell me, and they never ever did. The closest they did was they told me, well, you know, I said, I was trying to figure out what dolphins or whales, 
because dolphins sort of annoy me. I don't really like them. And yet, I knew that was what everyone was supposed to like. So they asked me about dolphins and whales. And um, I was hemmed and hawed. That was the only save I can remember them ever doing. Where they kind of scooped in and told me something that was ab about me. That was not their job to do that. I didn't, I didn't want them to. But, um, they, I mean, they helped me with a few blind spots, but yeah. They said, ah, no, you, you are more of the whale group. Uh, and uh, so, and we tell you, yeah, you want to know if you're part of the whale group? That is the energy, of course, every human being is of the whale group, duh. But, you know, family of origin, that kind of thing. Well, uh, whale energy, th uh, these are people who uh, prefer to, uh, and they find themselves just automatically uh, sitting at the edge. Just automatically. Not necessarily the back. Mm -mm. No, the edge. Side. They hold the corners. They're oftentimes holding the corners. In big public places, they are often very quiet. They are running grids, you know, at that point. And the where are very much more. The more people, the more grids. And uh, it's uh, not anything to be aware of consciously. It is something that the body runs. And it's a pleasure to do it. Stabilizing. So, we're going to go now. Uh, and... Uh, we are uh, gratified to be here and we say that a uh, couple words about this trust stuff. So, uh, yes, to be controlling. This is to uh, what need things to be a certain way. And uh, moving heaven and earth to make sure that that, that uh, happens. Needing things to be a certain way needing for the bed clothes to be wrinkle free uh, this is one that uh, this one had it would uh, drive her mad as a child she lay in bed and uh, and think what would happen if i was paralyzed right now because my feet are uncomfortable they're on a wrinkle i think i would be driven mad if i could not uh, exert my will she did not use those terms, but uh, she would fall into the feeling of not being able to move her feet. Mm. Wow. The importance of being able to uh, exert your will, to uh, do as you see fit. Important, yes. So, uh, to control, then. Usually riding with this, uh, if someone is highly controlling, they have a need to be right. And uh, usually at everyone else's expense. Therefore, things are a competition. There is much in the way of comparing. There can be much in the way of shame, blame, name calling. Rough language. Rough talk. And this can turn quite mean, you know. Why do we mention this? Well, because it's part of the mindset, is it not? Control. It is a myth. To control at the basis part of your personality without hooking up to your heart. Well, that creates havoc. It is a, a source of pain for many. If it can be identified as a symptom of anxiety, a fear, it's a fear-based behavior. Simply acknowledging it and loving oneself, yes, that is very good advice. So, taking responsibility, we only caution that, uh, yes, when you begin this path, oftentimes it's daunting because you say, oh my God, I'm responsible for this mess. Oh God. It is uncleanable. I am stained forever because of what I did in my ignorance. Cannot recover. Yes, this one has gone through many dark nights of soul. Thinking such thoughts. 
And you know, this is one way of looking at responsibility. When you take a look at what you have created and you don't like it, well, you got to take responsibility for not liking it. All right? You don't like it. Well, okay. Doesn't mean it's not valid. But it can be a, a, a verse of, oh, I hate it. Well, okay, but you know. You made it, so now what are you going to do? Well, if you believe you made it, then you know you can change it. How? By changing yourself. By changing the way that you behave. Your responses. How do you do that? Well, you got to be thinking different things. Plus, uh, you know, emotions, well, they play a part. And uh, it's not all thought-based. Thought yes. The emotional timber can change. And this is the, the energetic change. The soul like a spiritual one. There are many, uh, to end, there are many who are experiencing a uh, hitting wall. Have you noticed how many prominent people are dying? And uh, this is part of the ascension process. Many people are noticing. And some opt to go, and some opt to stay. And uh, this energy is here, whether you're aware of it or not, but other, some are sensitive and some are not. You can move beyond these uh, simple feelings and, and thoughts and uh, discussions. You can move to trust. This is a knowledge, not a hope. A knowledge. If you're not able to hold trust about something, then it's important to look at that and know you find it untrustworthy in one way or the other. Does that mean you are untrustworthy or the situation or whatever? Well, it's up to you. But if you look around and you don't trust very much, well, we would suggest that leads to a very unhappy life. Because once again, who is calling this reality to them? And to be in stark argument in suspicion of your own creation. Well, only a very powerful creator can pull that one off. So, we leave you in love and light this day. Very interesting topics, don't you think? Flow. Trust. <sighs> willingness. Namaste.